Welcome to Sweet Red Poppy. I'm Kimberly and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a face mask with a little help from your Cricut machine. First off, I wanted to thank Cricut for sponsoring our video today and allowing me to share yet another way to make a face mask with you. Depending on the machine that you're using, you can either cut out a template or you can actually cut out the fabric. So if you're using your Explore Air 2, you can cut out a template. So what I would do is use a sturdier material, so I could use cardstock or even something a little bit thicker, and I can create the template with which I can trace out my pattern or even use it as a cutting guide. What's nice about this is it's a little bit sturdier than just using printer paper, and if you plan on making a lot of masks, then this is a great idea. Also, let's talk a little bit about the maker. The maker can actually cut fabric out with its rotary blade. So this is really nice if you're tired of cutting out your masks by hand, maybe if you have arthritis in your joints, this is a really great option. So I'm going to be showing you how to cut out your mask with your maker and I have a really neat little trick to show you, you can actually cut out multiple layers of fabric at a time. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and get started. Select the machine that you want to use. And let's go ahead and prep our mats. First off, I want to prep my fabric mat. I'm going to place one length of fabric onto my fabric mat. I cut it 12 inches wide, and I will usually just keep whatever length I have. You can let it hang off the edge of your fabric mat. You don't need to cut it down to 24 inches. So line that up, make sure that it is fully adhered to that sticky backing. Now it's time for my trick to have multiple layers cut at the same time. What I'm going to use is a spray basting. Now this is a temporary adhesive. What it allows you to do is have multiple layers that are stuck together and it's only a temporary solution. So I'm just going to spray some of this along my fabric and I'm going to place another layer on here. And this is an adhesive that typically is something that quilters are using to stick fabric together. And it works great for this project. And I'm gonna spray one more layer. I'm going to be cutting three layers at a time. So line that up and then you wanna press down firmly, making sure that it's fully adhered and that you don't have any bumps. I'm also going to prep my mat for my Explore Air 2. So I have some cardstock paper that I'm going to be using. So make sure to line that up with your grid line and press it down firmly. And now we're ready to cut on both of our machines. Now I'm going to pull up Design Space on my computer and I want to make sure that I have selected the pattern that I want to use. There's a few different designs that you can choose from within Design Space. I think currently there's three different patterns. I also have an SVG of my pattern as well, so choose the pattern that you want to use. There's different styles and different fits. Make sure if you're using a two-sided pattern that has a curve in the middle that you have a mirrored image of your pattern. So I have two for the front and I have two for the back and I'm going to select make it. And then I'm going to select continue. If you're cutting this out on your Explore Air 2, then you only need to have one template in design space. You won't need to have multiples unless you really want to have a template, multiple versions of your template. And then within the materials, I want to select light cotton three layers. Now this is calibrated to cut through three layers of quilting cotton perfectly. So go ahead and select that, press done, and I am going to load my fabric into my machine. So while this starts cutting, I'm going to set up my other machine to cut up as well. On my Explore Air 2, I pulled up my one pattern that I'm going to be cutting out. I'm going to select Make It, Continue, and pair it to my machine. I'm going to load this mat and cut out my template. So I'm going to unload both of my mats and set my Cricut machines aside. 
I have both of my mats that have been cut out. If you're using the cardstock to create your template, go ahead and peel your mat away from your cardstock to reveal your template. So here's this nice template that I can use on any of the fabric that I'm working with. I could place it on a new piece of fabric and draw around it. I could even use my rotary to cut around it. So this is a great option if you have a Cricut Explore Air 2. If you have the Maker, then you'll have your fabric will be cut out. Go ahead and peel away your fabric from your mask pattern. And you can reuse the fabric that is at the very end of your mat. So I would just cut off the top and move it up. Now pull all of your fabric pieces off of your mat. It's nice because you have quite a few pieces of mask fabric that you've cut out and you didn't have to cut it yourself. So it just kind of does the hard work for you. At this point, we are ready to start sewing. So I want to place my mask pieces in front of me. You might notice that there is a little bit of stickiness still on your fabric. It's not super sticky, but it holds the fabric together and that's okay. When you throw this in the washer at the very end of our project, it's all going to disappear because this is a temporary fusible adhesive. So you want to place two sets of face masks in front of you. You should have two mirrored images. What we're going to do is place them right sides together. So lay them on top of each other. And I'm going to grab my sewing machine. If you need to, you can place a few pins in your fabric. If you use the adhesive option, your fabric's just going to stick together, which is kind of nice. Now I'm going to start at the top of this curve and I'm going to sew all the way down. Don't forget to backstitch as you start and as you begin. to do the exact same on this other piece of fabric. Back stitching at the beginning and sewing with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to set my sewing machine aside for just a second and lay my masks out in front of me. Now that your pattern is sewn, it's time to select the type of tie. So we have a few different options we can work with. We can use bias tape, which looks like this and is a nice little casing, or we can use elastic, which can go around your ears or your head, or I've even cut up some pieces of a t-shirt, which works pretty nicely as well. I'm going to go with the t-shirt strings because that's the most easily accessible for everyone. Everyone I think has a t-shirt in their closet that could probably be cut up. So I cut this into a one inch strip and I just cut off the bottom of my t-shirt. And I'm going to cut this into four straps. I like for my straps to be around 14 inches, but you can measure from here all the way to the back of your head plus a little bit extra so you can tie it. I take my t-shirt straps and I pull on them a little bit to see which way it curls in. And then I just fold it in half. And the reason I fold it in half is it just makes it a little bit sturdier than a single layer. Since I know I'm going to be placing a lot of pressure on this when I'm stretching it out around my head. So go ahead and do that and repeat that with the remaining three straps. Go ahead and place your lining fabric on top and throw in a few pins around the outside of this. If you wanted to have a filter in here, you could have left an opening right along this seam and then you could have a little filter opening, but that is totally up to you. I like to offset my seams. So I have one facing this way and one facing in the opposite direction. And I always put a pin right through there. And I do the same thing at the top of my mask. And I'm also going to put a pen right here along the bottom. This is just going to serve as a reminder to leave an opening for turning. And now I'm ready to sew my mask. 
Now it's time to sew around your mask and I am using a 3 8 inch seam allowance on this. Don't forget the back stitch. When you reach the corner, you want to put your needle in the down position, lift your presser foot and pivot. I'm going to leave a little opening right along here. Don't forget the back stitch. Lift your needle and jump forward a few inches and then you can keep sewing. Let's stitch again. And back stitch. Cut your threads. Now I'm going to turn this right side out. So look for your opening along the bottom. If you want, you can trim down the sides to get rid of any of this bulk. And then I will usually grab onto one of my straps and pull that out first. And keep turning everything out. And then I am just going to try to turn my seam allowances out by going back and forth making sure that everything is turned out all the way. And the final step is I'm going to give this a pressing just to make sure that all of my seams are nice and flat. Now I'm going to iron all of my seams. The very last step is to close the opening that you turned your face mask out through. You can close that opening in a variety of different ways. You can slip stitch the opening, you can top stitch around your mask, or you can use a fabric adhesive to close that opening. Once you've done that, you'll have your finished mask. So it's going to go on your face just like this. The top strap ties high around the top of your head. and the bottom strap goes around the base of your neck. Make sure to wash your mask to remove any of the residue that you have from that temporary adhesive. If you haven't already, make sure to check out Cricut's design space. It has a few different patterns that you can use and you can select the one that you feel like best fits your needs. They also have some really fun cut files um, that are perfect for just bringing a little more joy into your life. Thanks so much for sewing with me today. I can't wait to see the masks that you make. Go ahead and find me on social media at Sweet Red Poppy and you can tag me with your photos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll be back next week with another fun tutorial.